Welcome to the American Institute of Healthcare Professionals videogram on demonic activity in the world. And we're going to look at the cases of possession and exorcism in today's video. And this is for also those who are in Spiritual Counseling 590 and our Christian counseling program itself. Now, as we all know, the devil's greatest trick is to make individuals believe he doesn't exist. The denial of the metaphysical world benefits Satan and his spirits. So beyond our basic human passions and our own self-destructive inclinations, the most common participation of Satan in the world is through temptation itself. But there are far more insidious activities. And these activities spike more when individuals are involved in the occult or witchcraft. They are also more uh, spiked with individuals who encounter these types of uh, demonic activities within the Church of Satan itself, with the church that was founded by Anton LaVey. Also, with the rise of secularism, the culture of death itself, and a decrease in faith, many individuals' spiritual immune system is much lower, and they are more subject to to demonic attack and do not have the necessary spiritual defenses. So many naive individuals will also possibly come under these more insidious attacks that are found through possession or you know, a lower level obsession itself. So demonic obsession or oppression is a lower level of demonic activity that is not as extreme as possession, but it can be equally as terrifying. Souls can come under demonic attack beyond just our basic temptation uh, due to sanctity sometimes. So in the case of Padre Pio or St. John Vianney, there are many cases where demons would actually try to frighten them. They would shake their bed and so forth. And these are all founds within the stories of these two particular saints. But many souls can attract unwanted demonic activity through naivety or through intentional spiritual practices within the occult, witchcraft, new age, certain meditation techniques, or those who dabble with divinization, fortune telling, and spiritualism, trying to talk to the dead or a lost relative. Curses can also play a role. Those in the occult can place a curse on an individual. And there's no magic to this. It's just this like as Christians pray to focus good energy, the Holy Spirit upon someone. In curses, it's a demonic prayer to focus evil energy upon someone. So there are generational curses as well that go throughout an entire family line until it is completely removed. So with that said, demonic obsession is extremely terrifying. It's a precursor to possible potential possession. It is in itself a haunting, not of an object or place, but of the person. With demonic obsession, we see an increase in depression, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, lucid visions and dreams, sounds and visions, shakings of random objects, Unexplained bite marks or bruises or scratch marks that manifest within the person due to the obsession. Manifestations of this can include the apparition, apparition of dark hooded figures, which are usually indicative of the dark energy of the spirit. And with children, they can manifest as friends or through play objects themselves. After obsession com comes demonic possession. And demonic obsession can either be perfect or imperfect. Possession in itself is the taking over of the human body by the demonic soul, where they cohabitate, but they torture and control the human person. Now, if we think of it, possession is truly a mockery of the incarnation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where willingly a human soul was fused through the hypostatic union with the divinity of the second person. Now, this was a perfect fusion. It happened at the moment of Christ's conception. There was never a time before Jesus' human nature was not 
perfectly unified with his divine nature and they were complementary of one another and they were entitled tidally entirely one person now with possession it's a complete mockery it's a forceful taking it is one that doesn't respect and it's a dualistic existence in itself unlike the incarnation which is a singular person possession is biblical it's in the bible throughout scripture, throughout the Old and New Testament. Christ is seen throughout the New Testament casting demons aside. Many stories, there are demons inside individuals and they beg our Lord to not send them back because in possession, the demon is finding not joy in the true sense because they're constantly tormented, but they're finding a way to corrupt and so Christ, in one story, sent legion into a herd of swines, which then ran off the side of a cliff. So Christ, throughout the New Testament, on numerous occasions, not just one, casts demons out in his name. And he gives his church the ability to cast demons out in his name. So in imperfect possession, the person seeks deliverance from the spirit. In perfect possession, the person is at peace with the possession of the spirit and seeks no deliverance. So many of those within the higher satanic circles more than likely are very happily, perfectly possessed. They seem very normal, but Christians who are attuned with their spirituality can sense this. So the key element is the demon is able to share with the person the ability to sin to enjoy vice and to ultimately corrupt the soul itself. Now, within Christianity, there is the rite of exorcism, more precisely within uh, the Catholic Church, as well as in the Orthodox Church. And this comes to the fact that Christ granted power to his church to cast away demons. He grants it to all those who, in his name, are able to cast demons out. So those within uh, other religious denominations within Christianity also have this ability in Christ's name, although the rite of exorcism is one of the most, uh, most detailed, historical, and proven set of prayers that have very high success rates. Uh, the rite of exorcism has to be approved by the local bishop, and once it is approved, then the exorcism may go forward. Unfortunately, in the past, exorcism was obviously misused and utilized uh, for the mentally ill, and that was due to a lack of scientific understanding. Now, just because the scientific revolution occurred and individuals opened themselves to the age of reason doesn't mean that all cases of exorcism were not truly demonic. It just explains that some of them maybe had to do with schizophrenia or various other uh, emotional disorders. So the church now has a very detailed and meticulous process tied with mental health care professionals to exclude those that are suffering from mental issues themselves, those dealing with schizophrenia or psychosis from any type of further trauma that might be incurred through an exorcism. Upon a call, usually a parish priest visits or a deacon will visit the home and he'll conduct a blessing of the home and speak with the person. He then reports to the bishop any particular issues that might be out of place that might appear demonic or malicious. And the use of sacramentals during this part are an inter integral part of the process, including the use of the crucifix, holy oils to strengthen and holy water itself. If indeed, after all uh, the, the tests and screenings are completed through the mental health community, and it is proven to be unexplainable, then an exorcism can be scheduled with the church uh, for the family. It involves an exorcist priest that is either the official exorcist of the diocese, or if a signed parish priest is given permission by the bishop to proceed forward. Now, the priest prior needs to undergo fasting and deep prayer and contrition for sins. And this is primarily due to the scriptural verse where when the apostles were unable to cast out a demon, they asked our Lord what they did wrong. And Christ said this particular type requires fasting and prayer. And this is why prior to an exorcism, a priest goes through a rigor rigorous uh, set of fasting rituals and prayers to prepare themselves for this spiritual warfare in itself.
Now, the priest should never make this a battle between himself and the spirit, but it is more so the priest being an instrument of Christ to be able to help the family pray with him for deliverance of the individual. The rite includes various intercession to the saints, particularly St. Michael and the Blessed Virgin. It emphasizes primarily the authority of Christ to compel the spirit to depart from the body. It can take one or several times to complete in itself. Of course, during this process, the spirit will mock Christ, those present. It will say various vulgarities, reveal certain secrets. It will torment the priest. It will make the individual possibly speak in tongues. It will also throw a physical temper tantrum in some cases where things are thrown throughout the room and also uh, a, a metaphysical experience of a lowering of temperature within the room itself. All in the meantime, the, the, the human being who is possessed undergoes an arduous, very painful process where the demon will try to humiliate the individual. Uh, the individual may uh, try to harm him or herself. The individual may begin to defecate and also begin to uh, move around in unhealthy ways. Of course, these individuals exhibit extraordinary strength and no priest or family work alone. They usually have a couple individuals to help hold down this individual for the protection of everyone else. So spiritual hygiene and warfare are important themes in Christianity today. As spiritual beings, we must keep our souls clean as we do our bodies. And this is, comes into play where there are many families that are naive, uh, have no spirituality, and they can fall victim because their spiritual immune system is weak. This means frequent prayer, reception of the Eucharist, repentance, and if Catholic, reconciliation. It involves keeping oneself pure of heart and free from immorality. It moves removing oneself from sins and objects or places associated with negative energy. It means protecting oneself through Christ's name and if Catholic, the wearing of the brown scapular. It involves keeping the home spiritual clean through blessings and prayers. Home blessings are key throughout the year, especially at the beginning of the year. Holy medals and if Catholic, images of Christ and the saints should adorn the home. And even if not, Catholic. If you want someone's presence in your home, you have their images in it. So spiritual hygiene is critical and spiritual warfare exists every day. As Christians confirm to the Holy Spirit, we are soldiers of Christ. And through prayers and fastings and acts of reparation, we can help fight an effective war against Satan. So Christian counselors or lay ministers should always contact if they, in their spiritual warfare, come across someone they think that might be possessed, and they should find the proper authorities to review it within the church or within their congregation. The important thing, though, is ruling out of anything psychotic or any type of mental illness in itself. Bear in mind, if there is indeed a possession, it can be very dangerous for the counselor. So you want to make sure that you are physically and spiritually clean. You want to make sure you remove negative energy through blessings. And you want to make sure that if helping someone who is dealing maybe with obsession or haunting, that you properly protect yourself when you bless their home and so forth. So these are all very important things to remember with this discussion itself. AAHCP offers a Christian counseling certification. Our link's below. Our number is 330-652-7776, and our email is info at AIHCP.org. I recommend Father Amorth's uh, story. Uh, an exorcist tells his story, and that was recently made into a movie, although it was glamorized and Hollywooded up, so to speak. And there is also Malachi Martin's classic, Hostage to the Devil, which will go into more detail of what I just spoke about today. I'd like to thank you for listening and have a good day. But most importantly, have a very spiritually safe day. Stay close to Christ because Satan does exist and he's out to ruin our souls.